Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm kind of stuck up here on the computer today. I uh, hurt my back last week and although it's gotten good enough where I can walk around sometimes without the cane, I'm still a little worried about going down the steps to the bench. So uh, I was trying to think of something I could do up here on the computer. And I did have a couple, well, three or four people that expressed interest in uh, my coil former. Um, a while back playing around with a regenerative receiver kit I uh, did a custom coil form 3D printed it and uh, it's threaded so that the threads guide the wires and keep them nice and even up the length of the coil and a couple of guys wanted to wanted that model um, so they could follow along or, or build their own and I thought well reverse engineering that one would uh, that, that was purpose built um, I thought of the old adage, uh, it goes something like, uh, give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, uh, teach a man how to fish and he'll eat for his life, something like that. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's probably a better idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how you, can design, design, how you can design your own custom coil form in Tinkercad. It's really easy to do. Um, and then you could make your own coil forms purpose-built for whatever project you're working on. Uh, but real quick, before I get into that, um, I had a, uh, an email from Paul over at the Learning Electronics channel, and uh, he's got a really interesting uh, and nice um, YouTube channel. Uh, Learning Electronics, he walks you through his uh, builds. Um, he does a lot of tutorials on uh, different things. Um, he's really ambitious. He's shooting for... Uh, a new video every day. More power to you, man. But he contacted me and uh, said that he's a new ham and he found my videos extremely helpful uh, in his uh, studying for his ham license. And uh, he wanted to know if he could help me out in any way and asked if I needed any test equipment. And I said, well, uh, I could use a capacitance meter. And uh, well, he, uh, <laughs> he sent me a capacitance meter. So thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. I'll put it to use. And uh, I'll put a link to his channel uh, in the uh, description down below uh, if you guys want to check it out. Uh, lots of neat videos there, and uh, I like the way he explains things. Uh, you might find it helpful if you're just getting into electronics or ham radio. Um, good channel to visit. So anyway, um, back to coil design. So I needed a practical example for this, and I went out and I hunted around and I found a shortwave radio kit where they wanted you to wind a coil. Um, and they used a piece of uh, PVC pipe, as you can see here, one inch in diameter. And uh, this is nine turns here and three turns here with a one turn gap um, in between. So about uh, 13 to 14 turns of space. Um, and I thought, well, this would be a good practical example. If I wanted to model a coil form for this instead of using the PVC, um, that's what we'll do. So we know this is one inch in diameter. It's probably about one and a half inches tall um, when you just count the area with the windings. And then he's got a hole where the wires go in and come out to the windings. So I think this would be a good example for a coil form. So we're going to model this in uh, Tinkercad. So let's hop into Tinkercad. And let's get started. Okay, so um, the threads on the outside of the pipe. That was what was uh, most interesting to the commenters that asked about um, how to model these. And uh, I'll show you what I did. In Tinkercad, over here to the right, you've got your basic shapes. But if I go up here and I click on basic shapes, uh, there's some categories here. And one of these categories down here under community is featured shape generators. Now a shape generator, kind of like OpenSCAD, they use a scripting language to design a shape, to define it um, as, with a descriptive language. And then the shape gets generated mathematically. And one of those right here is an ISO metric thread. So if we pull that in, you'll see that what we have here is basically a threaded bolt. So that's the basis for my coil former. Um, now, that, uh, that form that we were looking at um, here is uh, one inch in diameter and about one and a half inches tall. 
Now Tinkercad by default works in millimeters. Um, if I click on a dimension I'm looking at millimeters. But down here there's a button in the lower right that says Edit Grid. And if you click on that you can set the default width and height of the grid but you can also set the units. And right now it's in millimeters. If you want to work in inches, if you're here in the US, you can select inches and all of the definitions will switch over to inches. So if I move up here to width and height, we can see that this threaded bolt is uh, 0.472 inches um, in diameter and uh, 0.34 inches tall. So let's, uh, let's change these values to match that coil form. So one inch by one inch and uh, height we want it to be uh, 1.5 inches tall. Okay, right away we see a problem. The threads are spaced out way too far. Well, over here we have controls for our shape and we can change things like the thread pitch. So I can get that a lot smaller, of course, then the height shrinks. So we've got a problem here. The uh, number of threads, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I can increase that. I think this is rotations. Yeah, there we go. And uh, let's see, what did I figure? It was about 14 total. There we go, 14. All right, so now we have, uh, it's covering about one inch of space. And I wanted that to be about one and a half, 1.5. Uh, so there is our rough coil form. Um, yeah. I guess that would work. You could fiddle around with that if you wanted that that thread spacing to be closer. Um, you could shrink that back down and then you could duplicate the shape. All right, so if I wanted those threads to be much closer to keep the wires closer together, uh, I could do that and then I could control D to duplicate it and raise my duplicate up like so. All right, so now I've got uh, almost an inch there. And this one is, yeah, that's almost an inch, but there's some overlap. So I think I'm a little bit more than an inch and a half, but let's, let's go with that. So we'll just select both of these and we will group them together. Okay, so there's our approximate coil form. Now his uh, was obviously hollow, so we could run the wires down inside, and this one is solid. So what I would need to do is I would need to um, add some, s well, I'd have to make it hollow first off. Uh, how tall is this total? You know, 1.6. Okay, so I'm gonna hollow it out. I'm gonna go back to basic shapes, and I'm gonna bring in a cylinder. And I'm going to make it the same diameter, one inch diameter, and I'm going to make it um, as tall, or if not a little bit taller. How tall was this? 1.6. So we'll make that one and a, there, we'll make it two. We're going to hollow it out. All right, so now I've got my cylinder. I'll turn that into a hole and I will center it on this one. So I'll select both of them together. Shift, select, got them both. And I go up here to the Align tool and say Center and Center. And now our hole is perfectly centered on our coil form. Problem is it's the same diameter. If it's on a hole through the middle, I need to figure out how thick I want the walls to be. Okay, and this is also going out to the threads. So let's reduce this guy's diameter. And we'll take it down to, uh, let's say, let's go for 0.7 and see how that looks. And I think that's gonna be too, too small. We don't want the walls to be that thick. So we'll take it up to mm, 0.8. We'll go just a little bit bigger here. See how it looks. And shift, select them both, align, 
center it and center it. And that's still probably a bit thick for the walls. Let's, let's make our hole just a little bit bigger. I think 0.9 will get us too close. Let's go with uh, 0 0.85 and 0.85. And we'll recenter them. Shift, select both. Align tool, center, center. That's looking pretty good there. Okay. Now I need my hole to go all the way through, and it looks like it is. Yep, because our coil is up off the bed. I can see our holes in the bottom. So all I really need to do is group these two together, and it will drill the hole. And there we go. We have our coil form with adequate threads that are nice and close together so the wires will be spaced close together and we can wind our turns on it. So that's really how easy it is to create a coil form. Um, now he had some holes through it so that the wires could go through to the inside. Oh, well to do that we just bring in another cylinder and we'll make this our hole size. So let's say uh, 0.2 inches. Well, I'm used to working in metric now, so working in inches is throwing me off. I think that's too big. Yeah, that's too big. We can make it a tenth of an inch, I guess. Okay, so that'd be our hole for the wires. So we'll rotate this 90 degrees. And then we'll bring it over to the coil form and we'll figure out about where we want it on the coil form. Uh, so let's go back and look at the image. He's got uh, wire comes in one, two, three turns. Wire goes out. So we want to we want a hole with uh, three threads in between. So we'll go down here. We'll move this. Oops. Let's see where we're at. There we go. All right, there. And we'll move it down to about where we want the first coil to start, which is near the bottom. And then we want one, two, three, was it four? No, three. Okay, so we got one hole here. We'll take this and we will control D to duplicate it and raise our duplicate up right there. So we got one, two, and I want to move that a little bit shorter distance. I'll change my grid snap down to 30 second of an inch. That should give me more granular control. Yeah, there we go. Okay, one, two, three turns, and there's our hole. Okay. And then our other coil was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten turns. All right. So we'll duplicate this again. And we want one turn between the two. So about there. So this will be our starting hole. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we want another another hole up here. So we'll duplicate that again and move this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It needs to go up two more there. All right. So that would be our holes for the turns, right? So let's select those holes, make them holes, and group them all together. And it punches the holes through, and there we go. We now have our holes in the coil former. Just that easy. Now the only thing I have left to do is I need to drop this back down onto the surface. So it's right on our, our work plane on our ground, our, uh, right on the ground there. 
And that is it. I mean, it is just that easy to make your own coil former. Not hard at all, is it? Tinkercad is great. So the only thing I've got left to do now is uh, print this out. So I'll come up here to export and STL file, which is what we need for our slicer for the 3D printer. And it will register the, reg render the file and it will download it. I'll go ahead and print that and then we'll come back and show you the result. All right, well, there we go. From computer to reality. You see the holes there on the side? I don't know if this is showing up on the camera, but the threads are pretty well defined. All ready for wrapping wire on. I guess that's not going to help any, is it? Eh, stupid webcam. You can kind of see the threads there. Now, you might notice that this has facets. Um, one thing you can do when you create a cylinder or that threaded object in Tinkercad is you can change the number of sides. Uh, I'll show you real quick. So when you bring in a cylinder or, or another round object and its uh, settings come up here on the right, you'll see there's a slider that says sides and that increases the number of uh, facets and makes it a smoother cylinder. And the same thing is true for the thread generator. If we go down here to the threaded bolt, bring another one in. Uh, I think it is segments. Yeah, if we can crank that all the way up, it becomes much smoother. So I didn't do that. That's why this has, you can see the light reflecting off them little flat sides, but that doesn't harm the coil at all. I mean, you're still going to wind your coil just fine with this. So, and it's hollow. Um, you could have easily made a, a bottom for it if you wanted to mount it on a PC board. You could make one with bigger threads. Um, you could make one with bigger threads, bigger diameter, longer. If you were winding a uh, air core inductor, you could wind the wire and then unscrew the form out from inside the wire. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a powerful tool. So, that's how you can make your own coil former in Tinkercad. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.